ponchos. Hello, my friends. Let's talk about various uses for ponchos. Uh, before I begin, though, we do have to recognize that there's different types of ponchos out there. There's, you know, ultra lightweight ponchos. Uh, some of those are throwaway ponchos that may weigh just a couple of ounces, if that. And then there's other ponchos that are a little more like military grade ponchos that can weigh two pounds or more. So it really just depends on what we're talking about to some degree. But um, what I'm going to be kind of focusing on is just kind of the average poncho that people have. It's not going to be so much the disposable type, but the type that is going to give you at least a few years of use if you take care of it. And it's even better if it is something that has grommets, if it is built well. Uh, you know, uh, of course, there's a, a pro and con with the bulk and the weight and the price of some of these ponchos out there. Uh, but just generally speaking, I'm taking this the average poncho and I'm going to talk about it here today. So I do have quite a list to go through. Um, I just want to thank my friends that I've asked uh, for insight on this topic for coming through. And I got quite a few ideas from my friends. Um, I did a lot of brainstorming myself. Um, I did go to a, a few websites just to kind of read articles on multi-use ideas uh, for ponchos, you know, like various uses for ponchos. And um, I did gleam a few ideas that I never thought about before. I mean, there's just so many resources out there. It's amazing uh, what people have come up with. So by no means is this list comprehensive. This is just a starter list. And really, this video is more about get you thinking about something outside the box. And uh, you may have a few thoughts on this topic of what you could use a poncho for. But I pretty much guarantee most people don't sit around and think about 20, 30 or more uses for ponchos. <laughs> so uh, we're going to try to attempt to get as many ideas in this video as possible. But once again, this is not all of the various uses you could, you know, do with the poncho. There's probably more than hundreds, pro probably even maybe thousands of uses really for a poncho. But uh, this is kind of more of a, a mental exercise just to get you thinking outside the box. So many people, when they, they buy something, they just buy it for one reason or for one purpose. And when you, we're talking about things like ponchos or tarps or multi-tools or whatever, there are so many things you can do with them. It's it's just amazing. It's it's actually just fantastical, really. It's it's just it's really kind of like eye opening. The more you think about things, uh, the more you can you can do with what you have. And so the same thing that goes with uh, like duct tape or garbage bags or cordage. I mean, it's just the uses are literally almost unlimited. It's just amazing how you can do so much with it. So without delaying any further. Let's get into some different poncho uses. So the first is the most obvious is to protect yourself from rain or to protect gear from rain. And the next is to create a type of shelter. Now, of course, this is going to be that much easier if you have a poncho tarp system or if you have grommets, basically. But without grommets, you can still do things. There are certain techniques, and I would encourage you to look into this. Uh, this is a podcast format, so I'm not, not going to put up a bunch of images or videos of all this. Um, I'm just kind of trying to highlight this topic. But there are ways and techniques to take cordage and uh, pebbles or small items and to uh, to actually be able to anchor, you know, and, and basically put into place uh, ponchos and make it as if it was a tarp. So it's very cool. Um, another idea that you could do is uh, to use your your poncho as a camouflage agent, a camouflage agent. So it could be if you're out hunting, you want to camouflage yourself or if you're trying to evade someone, you can camouflage yourself. Or maybe you just kind of want to be low key and not bothered when you go out camping. And so uh, definitely, you know, if you're just uh, taking a nap, maybe you're not setting up camp per se. Or maybe you are. Maybe you're using your poncho as a tarp. Uh, definitely having colorations and patterns on your, your poncho 
to match the environment can definitely help you to camouflage. Uh, another idea is that you can use it as a windbreaker. Uh, another idea is a uh, hunting blind. And this is even better if, you know, if you do have grommets and you have multiple uh, ponchos. Like if you're out with a couple buddies and each of your, your friends have ponchos, you can link them all together and make a, like a whole wall or even like a blind, a complete blind just with uh, these ponchos. So uh, all you would really probably need in addition to your ponchos is a little bit of cordage, right? And then you can string it up around some trees. You can use uh, your poncho as a pack cover. Um, if it's sturdy enough, you can use it as a hammock, um, as a even a chair. There's different techniques to, to do all this. It's very cool. Um, another idea is to collect rainwater, right? Rainwater is, you know, typically very sterile and safe to drink. Um, now, if it's been sitting for a while, you know, you probably would want to filter it just to be safe. Um, but yeah, you can definitely collect rainwater. You can also... Uh, use the tarp um, or poncho to prepare food. It could be a food prep, you know, surface. Um, you could also, if, especially if it's a high contrast, you know, poncho, uh, you can use it to, uh, you know, as a surface for repairs. So let's say that you have to take something apart. Maybe it's a radio or something and you have a bunch of small pieces. You can use uh, a brightly colored a poncho so that you don't lose anything. You can kind of keep track of things. So that's very cool. And in terms of colorations and stuff, I like some of those ponchos that are reversible. On one side, it's kind of like camouflage or olive drab or kind of subdued in coloration. And then on the inside, it's like high vis, you know, a yellow, an orange, or maybe like some kind of neon green. So if you want to be subdued, you have it that option, and if you need to draw attention, boom, you have that option as well. So check out those reversible ponchos. Another idea is that you can take your poncho and make it into a container, a bag, or a basket. You could also use it as a cache system. So instead of carrying all of your gear as you travel through an area, if you're hiking, uh, you can stash uh, some of your gear or supplies up in a tree, you know, using a, a poncho if you wanted to, um, or stashed in some brush. And uh, a ground cloth. You can also use it as a ground cloth. Um, and, uh, and or a mattress even. You can take it and fill it up uh, a few inches of uh, brush. You know, it could be leaves, it could be pine needles, whatever. And it gives you a little bit of... Uh, a distance from the ground so that conduction doesn't pull some of your body heat if it's on a cool night. Or maybe you just want some comfort, you know. So a mattress. Uh, you can use it for sun protection. Uh, you can uh, cut the poncho into strips to make cordage. If you were to do that, I'd start on the bottom of the poncho and work up. Uh, but yeah, certainly you can make cordage. Uh, you can also double the strips, you know, or triple the strips to make it stronger and stronger. So there's the option. Uh, it could be a, a wound wrap. You can make this uh, so that you can compress bandages. You can also use ponchos as an outer clothing shell. I mean, that should be pretty obvious. Uh, some ponchos hold heat better than others, uh, but it's better than nothing. Also, you can use it as a blanket or you can fill it up or just wrap it up or bunch it up and use it as a pillow. Um, I mean, there are some people like myself that I like to sleep on my side. And when I do that, I like to put a pillow in between my legs or at least between my knees to help align my legs. And so it doesn't pull in my hip muscles because there's a lot of times if I don't put something in between my knees when I sleep on my side, my hips will hurt the next day or in the morning. So that you could also use your, your poncho for that. Um, you also have the option to use your poncho as a curtain or a screen. Uh, it could be for privacy reasons, or maybe you're just trying to uh, not be visible, right? Um, you can also use your poncho to black out windows in a building or in a vehicle, okay? 
Also, you can use your poncho to stop leaks. For example, if there's like a rip or a tear or a puncture in your in your tent, maybe you can put the poncho over top and uh, minimize the leakage if it's raining outside. You can make a solar still. Uh, solar stills are very, very simple. Uh, you can also use tarps to do that as well or plastic sheeting, but you can certainly use ponchos for that. Um, you can also make a, a, a solar shower, right? You just leave it out in, in the sun and it warms up some, uh, some water and you can use that to bathe with. Uh, it could be a, a drag mat. You may want to move something or someone even if you had to. And you can use your poncho, especially if it's a, you know, if it's a military grade or a heavy duty poncho that can deal with being, you know, used like that. You can definitely put material support uh, or injured people on, you know, a poncho, secure, secure them to the poncho um, and, and drag them to safety or do whatever you need to do. Move them to wherever they, whatever they, they need to go. Uh, a quarantine divider. I just had to throw that in there because I'm like, in, in today's day and age, you never know when you need to have a divider, you know, in a room if someone's sick and uh, maybe you're out, you know, at a, at a cabin way out in the woods and someone gets really sick and you don't want to get sick as well. And so uh, you send someone for help. And then while you're there with the sick person, you can create a division you could use blankets or tarps or even, you know, ponchos to help divide you from them, especially if it's just a one room building, like a small cabin. Um, another idea is to uh, to use the poncho um, to create mask. Um, it could be that, you know, it's just like very, very dusky or, you know, a dusty or dirty environment. Um you know, the only thing is that most ponchos are not breathable, so uh, that could be a problem. But you can make face coverings, basically. Uh, you can cut out, you know, sections. Um, once again, I'd, I'd start at the bottom of a poncho and work up if you're going to take material off. Um, in terms of other uses, we have uh, cold compresses. You can definitely put ice and snow um, into a poncho and put it over a, a wound site. Uh, you can also use uh, the poncho and cut down strips, uh, just like if you were to make cordage and uh, to make a tourniquet. And you could also make splint ties and uh, the same way, just by cutting strips off the bottom of the poncho. Um, a sling wrap. Now, you don't necessarily have to cut up the poncho for this, but you, you could. You could make some strips and to just to make the the sling itself, uh, you could use ponchos as a stretcher. Uh, you could also use a poncho to help signal uh, for help, especially with signal fires. So it could be a signal device uh, for smoke signaling. Um, or if it's just high visibility, you can just, you know, put your poncho on a long pole or stick and wave it if you had to. And this kind of leads me to, uh, you know, the next item, which is a distress flag. Uh, you can also, you know, especially if it's high visibility, um, if, if, you know, the poncho is, you know, bright in coloration, you can cut small strips and use it as trail markers. Uh, you could also use your poncho as a bucket liner um, and even a fishing net. Now, I never really thought about that before. But I have a brilliant friend that brought that up recently, so I want to thank you for that. You know who you are. A fishing net. And I was thinking about how would you go about doing this. And so you could take a, a sapling that's flexible, and you have enough for a handle. And then the end, you could wrap around and tie off. And then with the actual piece of material that you can cut off the poncho, you would puncture holes all through it, Right. And then you can attach that to your sapling and basically, you know, just give it enough material so that it can hold some volume. And, and there you go. It's as easy as that. You have a fishing net. Another idea is that you can do shoe repair, especially if the sole of the shoe is starting to fall apart or it does fall off. Um, or if you just want to waterproof your shoe or waterproof, you know, your socks 
or your foot, you could definitely wrap it with your, your poncho. And the last thing that I want to mention, and this is really out there, but you know what? It is something that you could do if you really had to. Um, and this was, this was through some research. I was reading this article and there was this gentleman that did this and it, and it somewhat worked. And that you could use your poncho, especially if it's a poncho tarp, as a boat sail if you just had nothing else. So I hope this was interesting. I just want to thank you for your support and I'll catch you later.